You know, there's a lot of really good RVs out there, but it's like almost all of them have slide outs. And there's a ton of people who just want nothing to do with slide outs. And that's where this guy comes in. It's the 4,350 pound Grey Wolf 20 RDSE. In case you're kind of curious, that roughly means something like a 20 foot box, rear dinette, and SE means special edition. That's the series of Grey Wolf that we're looking at here today. It's a select group of Grey Wolf models that uh, they're basically purpose built to, to really hit a, a more specific weight tag, price tag, but to not feel underwhelming and that's one of the really cool parts about this one it's simple it's small it's lightweight but it looks good it's no slides it's no nonsense there's just less to take care of there's less to haul there's less to upkeep this is a really cool very popular little model a lot of people really don't always see coming because when you see no slides a lot of times you think it's small and cramped and there's certainly some areas like between the kitchen and the bathroom it gets a little tighter but the, the big windows, that giant rear dinette, they offer some things here that like, let's say you've got uh, a big grandkid, a giant dog, you're, you're gonna go buddy camping or something like that. The fact that you've got the master bed up front and then that big sleeper dinette all the way in the back, very separated, it kind of makes this one an interesting alternative to a small family bunkhouse. Or let's say that traditional bunks just don't fit your kids. You've got a kid that's just too darn big. I, I would have been a good indicator for that. Like in fifth grade, I was almost six foot tall. I got tall early. Bunks didn't fit me. This one would work. And then once I hit that age where I just <laughs> discovered the opposite sex and started driving cars and uh, just totally lost track of everything there for a few years, my parents wouldn't have to trade out of this one. It'd just be an awesome couples camper. Giving you the entry door right there as a reference point to get started. I'm actually standing up beside the front walk around bed. We'll come back here in a minute. What kind of makes this one work for me, even though it's no slide, even though it technically isn't like a private bedroom model, like you've got a privacy curtain there, obviously, but having that that bathroom and the kitchen right there form a hallway between the, the, the bedroom and like the living space it really, I think, creates an excellent definition here. Now, this model is carpetless. It is ventless flooring. And again, no slides. This is about as easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl as it possibly gets. And that rear dinette is really the whole focal point of this camper. That's why it's just, it's surrounded by all the big windows right here. And this is kind of where this floor plan and the, there's a very similar J-Flight called a, called a 212QB. They're very similar layouts. The J-Flight has a small dinette on the left and then a sofa on the right facing inward, whereas this just has the one giant true U dinette. So they both kind of do it a little different, but the thing is this one thing could do everything if you allow it to. Now I tell you what would make this all easier, what I'm about to show you, it's a pedestal dinette. First thing I do with this camper, pretty much any pedestal dinette, you hear me say this with very few exceptions, I would remove those, uh, the pedestal bases, which no big deal, it's just like six screws. And then I'd put on a pair of like free floating folding legs so that instead of a dinette, if I wanted to, I could move the table like left or right easily, but I could also just get it out of the way and turn this into a giant rear lounge. And that's what's kind of cool. Instead of just a dinette, this, this model can be really whatever you want it to be. Now, uh, a couple things here. Of course, you can fold this down into a guest sleeper, which is nice because it's bigger. And again, good for the bigger kids, but it is just full storage underneath it. But part of the reason I'm giving you a really good look underneath everything there is what if you wanted to do some custom stuff back here? There is nothing under that dinette. There's no water heater. There's no tanks. There's no like plumbing lines. You could, if you wanted to, totally pull the dinette out and convert this into like a very big flexible, frankly, it's big enough if you want to leave that wide open, that could be a mobile RV yoga space. I'm not gonna try any RV yoga today. Last time I did that, I got stuck upside down on a dinette and I almost bought a yacht for my chiropractor. We're not gonna get into that today, but you get the point. It can be anything you want it to be. And this is very comfortable. Now I mentioned that there's no floor vents or anything like that, but it is central air, which little campers in this class are not always. Jayco's good about that, but not everybody is a central dump AC versus uh, just a centralized distributing, dis distributing, pfft, there we go, air conditioner like this one. Um, they're the same power, but this 
provides more even cooling, which is kind of nice. Now, another thing I noticed here, this is an update, I believe, from last year. They've added, they've upgraded to the, ooh, holy crap, Batman. I didn't know that was motion sensitive. That's awesome. In a way, that's almost like a welcome home light because it'll be off the whole time. And then when you do the little, like, you know, thing over here to, to activate it, it'll light. Anyway, what I was getting at, is all of the lights are just now on one switch, which they weren't before. And you can Bluetooth connect to that thing. It'll also run your awning. Gives you an idea of our battery power, of the uh, uh, the holding tank capacities, etc. That is, that's cool. That, that little magic wave thing there obviously surprised me. Sorry. But central air, <laughs> sorry, keeping us more comfortable. Um, that is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, by the way, standard on these. Cherokee standardized that last year. That is something that's optional on most other brands. Now, in case you're curious to give you a better look here, there's some serious window coverage and they all open for maximum airflow here. Now, again, if we got it in lounge mode, you wanna come over here, you can, uh, well, I'm not going to, hold on just a second, kick my shoe off there, there you go. If you wanna come over here, just kinda, Kick the feet up. You can be straight across from the entertainment center should you choose to add a TV there. Now I did it. Now I got to get rid of bull shoes. Otherwise, I'm going to be walking lopsided the whole time. But you get the idea. The TV, if you want it, easy to view. Now, it comes with uh, that, that like, kind of flat surface mount. I'd probably swap that out for a, a pivoting mount if it were me personally. In case you're curious about the heating, it, it does have ducted heating. It just runs through the cabinetry like you see there. It's not just a, uh, a centralized furnace. Um, that little carpet square, by the way, that's a wheel well, in case you're wondering. I kind of wish it wasn't there, but it's just, it's got to be there. At the same time, though, I think there's a nice big spot here for a wastebasket. But as you're going to see as we go through the kitchen, there's a spot below the sink for a wastebasket, too. Um, so starting up here, I like those uh, glass inserts on that right there. And if you notice the backsplash, that, that cutting board backsplash, totally magnet detachable, and then we've got that big black stainless farm sink below the high-rise sprayer faucet. A couple big drawers right there. And I want to kind of remind you at this stage of the video, like we're looking at a lot of things that some much higher level RVs have, like wolf packs, arctic wolves, alpha wolves, have this almost exact same kitchen facility setup. You're getting that here at literally the most basic, sim simplistic level of the, uh, the the Cherokee family of RVs as well. You've got that big refrigerator. I, I want to correct something, by the way. I have called that a 10.7 cubic foot fridge. It's actually 10.4. I, I, I There are some 10.7s out there. I got it mixed up. Well, it's I think it's close enough, nobody cares. It's 10 to 11 cubic feet of cold storage. Now, down below here, a couple things. We've got our converter. And unless they've changed something, I don't see a sticker on this one, but unless they've changed something, Cherokee is using lithium compatible converters. Uh, might want to verify that though. If that's on your docket of things, let's double check that before you pull the trigger on something. Um, this also has the Cherokee juice pack. You see, you got the little voltage monitor over here, which is like a gas tank for your battery. You can hard disconnect this. What's cool though, is the power tongue jack's direct wired to the battery so that you don't have to go climbing into the RV to be able to, you know, raise or lower the uh, the jack. You can always just walk out there and click that thing. And power tongue jacks don't really offer parasitic load. You know, that little corner over there might make a decent wastebasket space too. Or, ooh, you know what look or work really good over here? Like uh, broom hangers or like a little coat closet, a little open air, grab a coat kind of thing. Maybe put a fly swatter there. I could see that doing a lot of different stuff right there. And by the way, this is kind of cool. They use a plastic T-molded wall panel seam, and they do the same thing up in the ceiling as opposed to just a tape. Um, because, and what I'm about to show you guys, it's it's easily the ugliest thing in this RV. You ready? <sighs> here it is. <laughs> it's hot, it's steamy in here. Um, sticker uh, tape on the, on the walls over there, it can get hot and steamy, just like a steam in a stamp off an envelope. Do you younger people watching this? Do you even are, do you remember stamps on envelopes? I've I've come to learn that I'm I'm becoming older, and things that I grew up with uh, aren't there anymore. Like I was like the last group of kids that like remembered pulse dialing and stuff like that. Um, you get the idea though. The what I'm getting at is this can't do that. Now working our way up front here. Let's look at the window coverage on this. So. 
sitting here back at the lounge. We got some folks coming to see us. Giant window off the back. We got our door side window over here. We have, uh, you know, all sorts of window coverage going on the door side. That's what's really impressive about this. No slide campers. I mean, that's a hard thing to pull off. Full viewing window in the entry door. Keep that in the back of your memory banks, by the way, because you won't see it from the outside. Uh, now, up front here, we've got a walk around. This is a camp queen. So that is what people are going to call like a shorty queen. It's 60 inches wide, which is normal width. It is a shorter length, though, because this RV is really designed to keep the weight, the length, the cost, and everything in check. But they didn't get stupid about it, I don't think. Like a full cabinet overhead, not just a shelf. And you'll see that around your seating spaces and sleeping spaces, you still have household and USB outlets all over the place. It almost surprises me that there's no TV hookups on the wall over here up in the, I'd say, bedroom space. But I don't know that this RV was really designed with like, we're gonna stay in the camper and sit in the bedroom and watch TV all day kind of camping. That's just, I don't know. That's just not how I see this one being used. And again, you do have the privacy curtain there. What I wanted to show you is it's on what I consider the correct side of the door. I have seen some manufacturers, not often, but I have seen some brands uh, include the entry door behind the privacy curtain, which to me kind of defeats the purpose. This is not a big bathroom. It's big enough. Like I could fit into it. And if you were bigger than me, you, you might feel that this is too small. Big vent fan up here though. And again, I've, I've referred to this a few times as the simpler series Cherokee. It's built with a price point mine, etc. Bigger vent fan. The things that matter. The big uh, medicine cabinet. Nice counter space there. They're nailing that. Although I think some people would probably wish that counter space was cut away. Uh, we've got a little shower here instead of a tub. Not really a bunk model. Not a lot of family focus. Surround paneling up here. And if you are my size, because travel trailers for Plumbing Code do require you to step up. This is a six and a half foot tall ceiling on the camper. If you're my size, you do need to have your head squarely up in the bubble. And this has to be one of the most frequently copied exterior looks in the industry. Cherokee adopted that kind of graphite, silver, and that navy blue sort of accent stripe through there. One of the things I like about it, I mean, take a look at this. You got the wolf graphic on the nose. You got the two stickers that say gray wolf. And other than that, other than the legally required like tire pressure loading stickers, that yellow thing by the front of the nose there, this is almost graphics free. Now, people spend an just incredible amount, seven to $10,000 sometimes on a full body paint package on like a fifth wheel or a motor home. This RV basically has a full body paint package in a sense, N not exactly, I'm not, I'm not but you, you get what I'm saying. This is going to hold up very nicely. It's not going to look aged, it's not going to look weathered. That no skin and the darker skin bands, by the way, are extra thick so that they resist heat expansion and contraction. Now, one thing I want to kind of warn you about um, is like this video, a lot of times people will see this video and expect it to be the exact camper that they come to see in person, especially with the consistency of Cherokee. But at the time of this filming, there are just a variety of shortages and production challenges facing manufacturers, like the power tongue jack, for instance. This RV has it. It's possible one that we have in stock does not. That's a hard thing for me to catch to even make the still photos match, mind you. So just little details like that, consider things like that. Well, I, I had a plan. I was going to show you something up here. Oh, that baggage door. Let's take a look inside that front baggage compartment. It, it does snake around under the bed. It is not a full pass through because in the opposite front corners where they have things like their, their water heater and whatnot. That's just a, a way that Cherokee was able to standardize their production to, to simplify a lot of things. Now, another very interesting note. This RV is not available in Black Label Edition. The SE series does not come uh, in a Black Label variant. It's one of the only ones that does not. But it would add weight, it would add cost. I think that's kind of the opposite of the goal of this camper anyway. They're trying to keep it simple, straightforward, no nonsense. Don't get me wrong, that Black Label thing does look good. But an interesting thing, if you actually follow the Black Label package on other Cherokee campers, you will see that big, I call it toothpick, that giant tall window right there. Those typically don't open on the Black Label series. Those frameless windows, when they swap to them, that one doesn't, but on this one, it does. You're going to maintain that just beautiful, I, I, I call it Invisiview entry door, where it's that full glass front um, that, uh, you know, you can, you can see out of it, obviously. It's got that uh, uh, shade inside there. 
Now down here, I love that little kind of frosting on the bottom of the window, the stable steps. And then down here, you, you notice this, a lot of little things like the J-Flight SLXs have recently adopted. You've got yourself what old Uncle Josh calls the propane cooker hooker right down there. And as we back up under a pretty decently sized awning, you can see that you also have the outside TV hookups right here. On the rear corner, there's a little leash latch there for your four-legged furry friends, or me, if I have a drink too many, which is like one or two. <laughs> and on the back, you see that uh, cargo rack. Now, interestingly, the spare tire you're looking at is not a standard feature. That is an optional thing we like to add to these. So if you're looking around and comparing, double check little things like that. That's a nice safety item we like to make sure you're covered with. Uh, speaking of safety, there's a Bluetooth backup camera built in factory standard above that rear window there, if you see that antenna sticking out. The RV, by the way, does have a fully walkable roof. Um, the, uh, it's got a 3 8 OSB roof deck, 16 inches on center roof and wall studs, which is, you know, a, a, a rough standard for like household construction. And, and an average of 12 inch on center floor studs with a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. Now, those facets I just gave you are very similar to like Wildwood and, and Catalina that we have here at Haylet RV, among some others, but they work. That's what's nice. This is simple, it's small, it's not substandard. And things like this, a full outside utility shower, hot and cold, and a black tank flush on a little trailer like this, those are features that are very often missed, overlooked, not present. And that water heater, it is gas and electric, and fast uh, recharge, which means you can get about 17.8 gallons per hour out of a six gallon vessel. And as we find ourselves at the tail of our video, hey, <laughs> that's, that's as good as my jokes get today. Um, is that, uh, frankly, that's about as good as they ever get. Do my jokes ever get any better? I don't, I don't think so. My wife and daughter agree, they do not. But um, what's your vote? No slide, let it ride? Or do you need that space all up in your face? I can see it either way, you know? My grandparents ended uh, started with a small little camper like this, then they got one with a slide, then a big fifth wheel, and then my grandmother had one knee replaced, and then she went to back to the, the big trailer. Then she had the other knee replaced, and they ended up back in something this size. I think that there's almost a cycle that goes about things here. And again, there's plenty of people that just like, dude, I just don't need a 35 foot trailer, even if I've got a three quarter ton truck. You know, it ain't always just about the small vehicle. Sometimes you're just looking to do camping. You're not looking to go glamping or living this thing. That's where she comes in. She looks good, give us a call. I will leave you a link in the video description, by the way, where you can check similar things like the Jayco 212 QB. Very, very similar layout. I've mentioned it a few times. They each do a couple things the other doesn't. Which one would you go with if you had the choice? So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.